What's up lazy dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having a spectacular day. It's starting to feel like fall again around here in the 70s today. Got a nice little cool off from that uh, I think it was tropical storm Nicholas that kind of just skirted along the Gulf Coast there. Got a little rain finally stopped raining enough for us to get out here and do some stuff in the greenhouse today. Got a lot to do in the greenhouse, a lot I want to show you. Um, you know, some different techniques, experiments we've been trying, even though I've grown transplants in a greenhouse like this before, because this is in a different spot, things are different. And so we're having to try new things and learn new things about how to best grow plants in this particular greenhouse, in this particular location. So I want to show you some of that. Also, I want to talk about onions. It's the middle of September. And it's time to get our onion transplants started and we got a lot of cool varieties that we're trying that we've never tried before and i want to tell you all about that and just kind of talk about growing onions in general so let's start out by just showing you what our transplants are looking like here and then we'll talk about some of these different techniques we've been trying so we've got almost this side here this shelf here almost completely full we've got our gourds here that still haven't germinated except this one but funny story about that that first round that didn't germinate i just dumped out the soil and seeds right here and look right there in the ground just thrown on the ground they're germinating there so might be a lesson learned not to even try to grow gourds from transplants just throw them in the dirt and let them do their thing because they germinate just fine out here but they do not want to germinate inside this greenhouse as far as the other stuff we've got going here, we've got these giant marigold transplants. This was the first tray we started, uh, these flowers here. So we've got the giant marigolds. They're ready to go in the ground. As soon as it gets dry, we're going to be planting those. The calendula, the bachelor button is ready to go in the ground. These snapdragons have been so slow, but they're finally starting to grow a little bit. Not the best germination. And from what I understand, these things are just tough to germinate from seed anyway but uh looks like we might have a few viable transplants here got a little bit of burn or something going on on some of this calendula here i don't know if i got fertilizer a little too hot or over fertilized we've just been kind of experimenting with that and i'll talk about that in a minute but still got a good decent amount of transplants there to go in the ground soon as soon as it dries and then we've got all of our cool weather stuff over here so we've got our cabbage broccoli cauliflower all this stuff's looking pretty good got really good germination on all this stuff and it's um popping up got true leaves on it we've been fertilizing it about twice a week and um just really really happy with how all this stuff is looking this portuguese kale is the fastest growing thing i've got planted out here it just grows super super fast we've got our cabbage right here our red cabbage and green cabbage and then the other thing that grows really fast is this pak choy and this savannah mustard here so getting a nice full tray there over here we've got some herbs and stuff going the celery which i've never grown before i read that you're not supposed to cover the seeds so you'll see i didn't cover the seeds with perlite there i just made an addition dropped a few seeds in there and i had also heard that it takes forever to germinate and it does but we're finally starting to get let's see if we can see that there's two right there finally starting to get some germination there so not covering the seeds and uh, just being patient worked the other stuff we've got in here this is all fennel right here so we'll be transplanting that out we've got some cilantro there with not super great germination but probably enough plants for what we want to do and then we've got some dill on the end there and then I was a little behind schedule getting my lettuce planted, but I got it in. It's not came up yet. I just planted it uh, before I turned the camera on here. So we've got four different varieties. We've got this Tropicana leaf lettuce, Sparks, which is a romaine, Adriana, which is a green butterhead I've grown before I really like, and this one called Alkindus, which is a red butterhead, I believe. Never tried that one before. So we got those in the ground probably a week or so later and we wanted to excuse me not got them in the ground got them in the trays a little late but we should be just fine now on the lettuce here when we're growing lettuce we like to grow the big heads of lettuce 
some people will take lettuce and kind of crop off the leaves as it grows kind of like you do collards or kale and just get what they want but when we grow it we do a single cut we wait till the head gets full size or close to full size and just cut it one time put that head in the fridge we usually you know eat a whole head for a meal making a big salad or what it wraps or whatever we're using it for so we're growing head lettuce around here that's the you know kinds we like to grow whether it be romaine butterhead or um, like this tropicana which is a little more of a, a loose leaf lettuce but we still let the heads get nice and big when we're planting lettuce we like to plant these pelleted seeds right here okay so raw lettuce seeds are pretty tiny and they're hard to singulate in the cells i mean you have to be really really careful you're just trying to get one seed per cell in the tray but these pelleted seeds which are just coated with clay to make them round and bigger and easier to handle are a lot easier to singulate in the tray so that's why we like using pelleted lettuce seeds i think these were originally designed for you know the large-scale commercial greenhouse industry because these work with those big vacuum planters they have but they also work great for the home gardener because it just makes your lettuce seeding a lot faster now one thing about these pelleted seeds here because they have that clay on them if you're just strictly bottom watering you're probably not going to get very good germination with these after you plant them you need to be flushing some water from the top there because you got to wash that clay pellet off there to get that seed to germinate the pelleted seeds always germinate really really well for me but probably because i do a lot of top watering at least initially but you got to kind of wash that clay pellet off there and these things usually pop up and grow pretty fast now let's talk about some of the experimentation we've been doing in here with fertilizing and also how hot we keep this thing you'll notice i have the windows the roll up roll down windows on this thing almost all the way down and from my past experiences with this greenhouse we would leave them up all the time especially this time of year but since this one is in a little cooler spot on the back side of this barn here i have found that i can leave them almost all the way down i'd say they're about two-thirds to three-quarters of the way down and it's keeping it a little more warm in here not too warm if i let them all the way down it gets too hot in here but i can leave them you know three quarters of the way down and that's really kind of speeding up my transplant growth there so i have these puppies ready in time uh, when i'm ready to get them in the ground so i've been kind of playing around with that and i think i found at least for this time of year the way the weather's been kind of the sweet spot there with them being right there i don't have a thermometer in here to really tell you what the temperature is inside here but it doesn't feel too hot right now but i've uh, just been kind of playing around with it and seeing how quick these trays dry out based on how high i have that curtain there so now let's talk about what i've been doing as far as fertilization goes now i told you several several videos ago that we're trying to use this stuff right here this agri thrive which is made with fish emulsion and corn steep liquor but it's supposed to be a lot more biologically active than your standard fish emulsion and work a little faster so we're trying to use this instead of the 20 20 20 this is supposed to make a transplant that doesn't experience as much transplant shock and really gets going when you put it in the ground we haven't put any in the ground yet so we'll have to see if that's true or not but that's what they tell me so we've been using this agri thrive stuff to fertilize our transplants in the greenhouse and i've got a discount code for the agri thrive i'll put it in the description below if you're watching on youtube you can uh, use that code to get a discount if you want to order some of it so we started out we were using this little spray bottle here which just worked okay when i had one or two trays in here but when we added all these brassica trays you know kind of wear your hand out squeezing this thing that many times and i had a viewer on or a follower on facebook or instagram or something that said that these little things these little hand pump sprayers work great for fertilizing seedlings and i was at the dollar store up the road the other day and in the checkout line and they had a little clearance rack there for home and garden stuff and i seen this guy here and it was five bucks and i said hey i'll give that a try if it fails me or whatever i, I haven't lost much five dollars this thing works really really good it kind of atomizes the spray pretty well and i can cover a whole you know rail in this greenhouse 
pretty quick with this guy right here. So what I've been doing, I've been kind of trying to play around with how much agar thrive to put in here, but I've been putting about that much in there and then filling the top, filling the rest with water. And that seems to be working pretty well. I haven't burned anything too bad yet. I don't think I would go more than that, but uh, that amount seems to be working pretty well. So this little guy here, you know, you just pump it up like that and then it sprays out pretty nice little stream there and I can fertilize all these trays pretty quick with this guy here so this may just be my go-to way to fertilize in the greenhouse from here on out because even if I've got this whole thing full it only takes me a minute or two to do this and I'm not using but I don't know a fifth of this little jug at the time when I'm fertilizing them I've been trying to do it two times a week so this has been the perfect little tool for me given what I'm doing here with the agar thrive we don't have to worry about burning stuff as much but i have been kind of trying to push the limits to see how early i can start fertilizing things and how often i can fertilize these transplants so what i've found so far is that it's, it's, with these brassicas because that's the only thing i've tried it on is that i can actually start with this agar thrive before they form true leaves because with this stuff, we don't really have to worry about burning them like we do the 2020-20. We don't have to be as careful. This stuff is not as hot. It is a little bit slower, but not significantly slower than the 2020-20 I have found. So we can go ahead and start kind of getting this stuff in the soil before, you know, right when they look like they're about to form some true leaves or their second set of leaves, we can go ahead and start feeding them and it seems to really give them a boost these things are growing fast so like i said i've been feeding them twice a week and you can see some of that fertilizer residue on the top there it turns that perlite colors another advantage to using that perlite on top there is it does kind of hold or soak in some of that fertilizer so it kind of keeps it there and you're not losing it as you're watering and kind of flushing the trays with water kind of keeps that fertilizer holds on to it a little bit better so that's another added advantage to using the perlite on top now you'll notice i have these bottom trays underneath here now which we didn't have before so i went on greenhouse mega store and purchased i think 10 because that's how many of these big prop tech trays i have 10 of these garland bottom trays i think they're called maxi trays they have different sizes i think this one's called the maxi anyway i got those so i don't lose as much of my fertilizer as well just kind of catch all that stuff and feed these guys but i only put those on there after i get things up and germinated after the roots and after i know the roots are to the bottom of that cell because if the roots aren't at the bottom it's not going to do any good to have that as a water reservoir because its roots aren't going to be able to soak it up they're not long enough so like with this lettuce right here i'll let this lettuce germinate and once it's up and going and i know it has roots to the bottom then i'll put a bottom tray under it just like i have everything else here that's my strategy right now we'll see how it works we're just experimenting but i think that's going to work pretty well and, and help you know hold on to some of that fertilizer that we're applying on top of those plants when i do spray these guys with that little pump spray in the agar thrive i make sure i water afterwards i don't want to leave it on the leaves i don't know if it would burn the leaves but it might could so i'll spray it on there and then i'll water and kind of make sure there's no residue on the leaves there now we did get some more stuff from greenhouse mega store specifically for our onions and leeks starting our alliums and trays and i want to show you these these are really cool but like i showed you before we we got some more of these big bottom trays here and those are going to help us retain the fertilizer not have to water as often if i go out of town for a day or so i don't have to worry have to worry about having somebody coming in here and watering this stuff twice a day so that'd be nice these trays right here we can see them stacked up here i ordered a 10 pack of these so these are they call them 10 20 trays but they're larger than a standard 10 20 tray so don't buy these thinking they'll fit in some of your 10 20 bottom trays you already have they won't quite fit in there and they have several different cell sizes of these i think this one is 238 cells so you can see the cells are a good bit smaller than on 
those trays over there but that's going to be perfectly fine with onions and leeks because we don't need a very big cell size but these are deeper so you can see there so it's a deep cell design there and one thing i really like about these is they nest so they don't take up near as much room in the greenhouse when you stack them because they nest into one another it's the same kind of heavy duty plastic these are made by prop tech same high quality build and construction that you have with these larger prop tech trays just a smaller footprint and they're stackable so i really really like these so far and if you're growing indoors or you don't have as much room and need a, a smaller tray with a smaller footprint this is certainly the way to go with anything when you're ordering online you get a better deal if you order more of them i can't remember what an individual tray was but it wasn't too bad buying a 10 pack of them so we've got five of them filled with soil there another five right there probably going to plant a bunch of onions now as far as the bottom tray goes because this is a little bigger than a 1020 tray it's not going to fit a standard 1020 bottom tray like i mentioned but garland does have these square trays which are on greenhouse mega store as well that hold two of these guys so i'll show you this it's, it's pretty neat so two of those fit perfectly into that square bottom tray there so you're not going to find a bottom tray that just fits one of them but you can put two of them in that square tray and that's going to work great there once our onions get up and going and speaking of onions now let's talk about all these different varieties we're going to be getting started in the greenhouse today now if you know me i rarely ever grow the same thing twice or the same variety twice i have a few solid varieties like the green magic broccoli being one of them that i always plant but i love always trying new things and i've tried a ton of varieties of short day onions over the years and i had to do some deep digging to find some varieties i haven't tried before but i did find some and i want to tell you about them there is one variety that we're planting that we've grown many many times but all the rest of these are new to us so down here in the south we have to grow short day onions if you're in the middle of the country you grow intermediate day onions if you're in the northern part of the country you grow long day onions down here we grow short day onions and we overwinter them now not everybody that grows short day onions will be able to overwinter them like we do but onions can take temps down to 20 degrees or so as long as those temps aren't sustained so if you rarely get to 20 degrees and if you do get to 20 degrees it doesn't stay there for an hour or two then you can start your onions in the fall plant them in you know aim for an in-ground date november or so and then overwinter them for spring harvest and you'll get some nice big onions that way if you do regularly get below 20 degrees you probably want to wait till the following year late winter or so to get your onions in the ground so i use kind of that 20 degree benchmark to tell people in the short day growing zone whether or not they should try overwintering or not that's kind of the the baseline there so we grow these short day onions and the difference between short day intermediate day long day is just when the bulbing process starts and that bulbing process is triggered by day length for short day onions the bulbing process is triggered when the day length reaches anywhere from 10 to 12 hours and that happens for us down here you know late winter early spring or so for intermediate day onions that bulbing is triggered when day length reaches 12 to 14 hours and then the long day onions the bulbing is triggered when that day length reaches 14 to 16 hours so as much as you may want to try a short day onion if you live in the north it's not a good idea make sure you're growing onions that are for your specific growing region i hear great things about walla walla onions but it's a long day onion and i know i can't grow it down here if you plant a long day onion here in the south we never get to 14 to 16 hours of daylight so all i'm going to do is just grow be growing a bunch of onion greens and i'm never going to make a bulb if you grow a short day onion up north you're going to already be at that 10 to 12 hour day length pretty quick there and you're going to make a bulb without not a lot of vegetation and then you're going to end up with a tiny little onion there so make sure you grow the right type of onions for your area so let's go through these real quick like the first one we got is one we've grown before you'll see this by several names you'll see it called texas early grano texas early grano 502 texas early grano 502 prr 
or Texas legend. It's all the same thing. Um, so whatever name you find it under, just know that, you know, it's all the same. Different companies are having longer names for it or whatever. But we've grown this Texas legend many years before. It makes a round onion stores pretty well. And so this is the one variety that we have grown before that we are growing again. I really like this variety. Now, red onions. We usually just plant one row of red onions. But this year, I'm planting a lot more red onions. If you go way back to when we started this channel, one of the first few videos, we showed you a recipe making pickled red onions, which we tried for the first time this year. And those were amazing. And we went through all our red onions really quick, making those pickled red onions. And we ate all those pickled red onions and I wish we had some more now. So I'm growing a lot more red onions this year strictly for pickling purposes. Those red onions, they bolt bad. They don't store that great. But the pickling process allows you to kind of store them and preserve the harvest. So we're going to grow a lot more red onions. I got this one here called Red Rock. Never tried it before. It's a hybrid jumbo red onion. So looking forward to trying that one. As far as the sweet onions go, I had to do some digging, like I said. And I found several different sources online that had some short day sweet onions that I haven't tried before. So the first place I found them was this place called Witwam organics w-i-t-w-a-m and they're out of tampa and this variety is called super x and i from the research i did online it's also called a maui onion so a lot of people grow it in like tropical and subtropical areas but i presume it's hot enough down here for this variety as well now if you order some from this witwam place I'm sure it's a, it's a great operation. Their site looked legit and everything, but don't expect any fancy packaging here. We just got two little Ziploc bags with the name written on there. We don't have a germ rate, a test date, or anything like that, but I, I got good faith that these seeds are going to germinate and do well for us. So this variety is called Super X. It's supposed to be an early variety. Got a kind of a flattened globe shape. It's not you know granix type where it's really flattened it's just kind of semi flattened but more of a globe shape so super x there now the next one we've got here and the rest of these varieties i found online from a company called ne seed i'd never ordered from them before but they have a pretty good selection of short day onion varieties and so the first variety i found here is called sapelo sweet now my first inclination was this is probably the same thing as Savannah Sweet, which I've grown for many times. And this is just renamed Sapelo Sweet. I don't know that for a fact, but that's just my guess. If you're from Georgia, you know about Sapelo Island, which is off the coast of Savannah. And so to me, this is probably the same thing as Savannah Sweet. We'll just have to see. I really like Savannah Sweet. It's a great variety. So I'm expecting good things from this Sapelo Sweet here also got this variety called dp sweet and there's a breeder called dependable proven seeds or dp seeds and i think they kind of created this variety so that's where the dp sweet comes from this is a round onion supposed to be um, downy mildew resistant so looking forward to trying that hybrid and then we've got two here that are kind of similar uh, the only difference being a little difference in their shape so we've got one called Timon and one called Pumba. And I couldn't get Timon without getting Pumba, Hakuna Matata, right? So we're gonna try both of these. The Timon is a flattened round onion. The Pumba is a granix, you know, really flattened onion. But these are supposed to store really well. So we'll be able to compare Timon and Pumba and see how they perform side by side. And then the last one I have here is another red onion a hybrid red onion from any seed called chianti or maybe it's chianti not sure how you pronounce that but it's a big round red onion a hybrid so looking forward to trying that one so we've got one variety we've grown before we've got one two three four five six seven that we haven't i like to plant a whole plot of onions 
So one of my 30 by 35 pots will fill the whole thing up with onions except for a row or two of garlic or leeks on the end. But uh, I love doing onion trials. It's fun to me. It's a great thing to do over the winter and kind of look at the differences between all these varieties. So let's get some seeds going. So for these new trays we've got here, which I told you are 238 cell, it may be 231. It's something in the 230s. We're just going to split it up two varieties per tray. I'm just planting a 30 foot row of each of these varieties. So I don't need a whole lot of plants. You know, we usually put them on a six inch spacing or so. So I need really just 60 plants per row. So a half a tray per variety will be plenty. I've already made a little indention in the cells here with my fingers so I can, you know, have that seed sitting down in there. Don't have to worry about it washing out of each cell. And when you're planting onion seeds, unlike, you know, the broccoli or the lettuce or things like that where we're trying to get one seed per cell and we'll thin them out if we have extras, uh, little seedlings in each cell. But the onion seeds, you don't have to worry about that as much because onion seeds are really easy to tease apart. So you can actually make more out of your trays by planting a few seeds per cell if you want to. You know, lettuce is kind of hard to tease apart. Some of the brassicas may be kind of hard to tease apart. So if you want to get, you know, make sure you get good germination, a good full tray, and also make more out of your tray, you can get two or three onion plants per cell if you want to and just tease them apart at planting time. So I'll not be so careful with these onion seeds and I'll put a couple seeds per cell in here and we'll get a nice full tray and we'll have plenty of onion plants to go around. And as far as the germination time on onion goes, they do take a little longer to germinate than say some of those brassicas we plant, broccoli and stuff like that, lettuce, which is not a brassica. But they don't take as long as something like that celery or for sure those gourds. I expect these things to be up in probably a week or so. So six or seven days, we should start seeing some little sprouts and when that time comes, I'll be sure to show you guys because these things sprout a lot differently than um, the other crops we grow. The little singular onion leaf will kind of just flip up out of the soil, but it'll be one end of it will still be kind of bent down in the soil. So it'll pop up, but be kind of folded over, and then the other part will finally flip out. And a lot of times it'll still have that seed head attached. And some people worry that means they didn't do something right, but that's perfectly normal. And once the whole, you know, piece flips out of the soil, that's when we'll start fertilizing these guys. And so usually with onions, we're looking at about six weeks or so from seed to viable transplant that's ready to go in the ground. Nice little onion plug there. And we're aiming for an in-ground date. I planted as early as late October, but any time in November down here is fine. I planted even early December and been just fine. But I have experimented with that, and you can get away with planting late October if you have transplants ready by then. But the goal down here is to get them in the ground and get them growing good, get some nice vegetation on them before it, you know, gets cooler. We start getting, you know, some freezing temperatures here and there. We don't get a lot of frost, but we get some. So we want to get these in the ground late October, early November is ideal so they can really start putting on some growth there'll be a little bit of transplant shock but get these things up and growing before it gets too cool and um, really work on developing a lot of vegetation there before that bulbing phase starts the following year So we got all our onions planted now it's time for our leeks and if you're gonna grow some onions you might as well grow some leeks beside it because these things are really tasty and uh, they're easy to grow just like the uh, onions are in my opinion now leeks are slower to germinate and they don't germinate as well in my opinion so um, probably not gonna get as good a germination on leeks as you are onions it's just part of it but um, 
We'll plant a whole tray here. We don't need a whole tray's worth of plants, but we're not expecting to really get a whole tray worth of plants because, like I said, leak germination is not always super, super great. But we'll get what we can out of this tray. We should get enough from this tray for at least one or two rows of leeks, which is all we really need to plant. And I'm going with the Tadorna variety, which I have grown before. It does pretty well for us. Tried some other varieties over the years. Uh, I like Tadorna. There's one called Megaton, I believe, that I want to try, but uh, I can't ever find seeds from it. It seems like Johnny's is always out of stock on it, and um, just haven't been able to find seeds, but it's supposed to make a real big, nice leak. So maybe one of these years I'll get to try that variety. All right, so we got four trays of onions, two varieties per tray, so eight varieties of onions and then one tray of leeks. I didn't have quite enough seed to make it to the end of the tray, so there's a few rows at the end there that weren't seeded, but that'll be all right. And now we're just going to come in here, like we always do, and cover the seeds with some perlite here. And when you go to water these things, these onion seeds, you have to be real careful if you got too much water coming out of there and you're splashing stuff around you will wash these onion seeds out of the cells i have seen it done but uh you want to make sure you use a nice soft nozzle or mist nozzle you know i really like the dram nozzles but something soft and gentle so these seeds stay in their cells until they can get going and uh germinate and forming some roots all right, all right, all right. Glad to get that done. Glad to kind of get back on schedule as far as my seed starting goes. I need to direct seed some English peas as soon as it dries, do that. And um, also get these flower transplants in the ground. Now, probably the whole reason you came here to watch this video is based on the title. You want to know what the difference is or is it better to grow onions from transplants or to buy plants? And let me mention before I get into that, you don't have to grow your onion plants in trays like this. If you've got a little raised bed or a little, one of those little tartar fire rings like I've got my ginger and turmeric in, you can grow your onion plants in there. You just basically scatter those seeds out there real thick, just lightly cover them and keep them, you know, keep the soil moist. They'll take a little while to germinate and they'll eventually all pop up and you just go pluck them from the soil and then you can go put them in the intended row and space them out a little further. And if you're new to growing onions, you might be wondering, well, why don't you just direct seed these guys in the ground? Well, as I mentioned, they take a little while to germinate. So if you direct seed these in the ground and just put one seed every six inches or so, you're not gonna get as good a germinational onions as you do other stuff. And since they take so long to grow, your weed pressure is really going to get the best of you. So that's why we grow them in a controlled environment in here and then pull them out and put them in the ground at the spacing we want them. If you just go out there and scatter them along a row, they're going to be too thick. You're going to have to thin them. And also your weed pressure might get the best of you eventually there. So that's why we start them in here and then put them in the ground on the rows. Now, why should you grow your own onions versus buying onion plants and i did a trial i think it was two or three years ago and comparing this growing my own onion plants versus you know side by side versus onion plants we had bought and there was a difference i won't say it was a huge massive difference it's not a big enough difference to justify going and buying a greenhouse or getting a seed start and set up just for onions but if you've already got a seed start and set up you may want to give growing your own onion plants a try if you've got the time if you've got the resources to do it you will grow a bigger better onion in my opinion just because you're not getting that big transplant shock period when you buy an onion plants you know those things have been out of the ground for a week or two or maybe even more in some cases and when you put them in the ground it takes them a little while to get going whereas these we grow in here in these trays we put them in the ground they start growing pretty quick so you'll get an onion quicker you'll get a little bigger better onion in my opinion from growing your own transplants and they go straight from the trays to your soil in the garden they just do better that way as opposed to the ones that have been out of the dirt for a little while it's not a huge difference like i said but there is a difference there now another reason you may want to grow your own onion plants is because you can't find plants for the variety that you want to plant 
a lot of these varieties that I'm growing here, I won't say all of them, but most of them, you're not going to be able to find onion plants online or locally for these varieties. So if there's some cool varieties online you found that you want to grow, the only way to really get those varieties will be to start them from seed and grow your own transplant. So that's something to consider as well. So if you've already got a seed starting set up, you've got the time and the resources, and maybe you like experimenting with all these different varieties like I do, go for it. Grow your own onion plants. If you don't have a seed starting set up, and maybe you didn't think about, you know, starting these onion plants six weeks ahead of the time when you're going to need to get them in the ground, maybe just buy some plants and you'll be just fine. So thank you guys for joining me in the greenhouse today as we get caught up on some stuff, get back on schedule. If you've ever grown any of these new to us onion varieties that we're trying this year definitely let me know about your experiences with those in the comments below or better yet just tell me what your favorite onion varieties are you know because if you live in the intermediate region and long day region your favorite onions are going to be different but just let me know what your favorite onions varieties are and if you're not growing onions you need to be growing onions just make sure you plant them at the right time for your area if you enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe ring the bell like and share and we'll see you next time right here at lazy dog farm well mm -hmm. by the beauty of your life